This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. We're back. We're live, four o'clock clock here on a Wednesday. This is Think Tech Hawaii, and more specifically, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm Jay Fidel. I live here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my co-host and the co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum is Sharon Moriwaki, sitting immediately to my left. Shot of Sharon. Oh, nice Aloha. Christmas outfit. Okay. <laughs> and our co-co-chair, our kibitzer, our color uh, commentator, <laughs> is Ken Rogers. He's a retired Canadian businessman and, and has a different perspective we, what we like to share. And finally, our special guest um, calling in from the island of Kauai is Ben Sullivan. He's the Energy and Sustainability Coordinator for Kauai County. Welcome to the show, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. It's, uh, it's great to join you. Always good to have you. Years and years now. We're all getting old together, <laughs> except <laughs> Sharon. <Yeah. laughs> so, Sharon, what about this thing on January 10th? It's really important. Ben's going to be featured as, as the other counties, but the, um, the, the uh, real thrust of the whole uh, con the legislative briefing this year for the Energy Policy Forum is on sustainability and resilience. You know, we're thinking, hearing all about climate change, the accord, all kinds of things going on. Um, our our um, whole planet, as well as Hawaii, being most vulnerable in the middle of the Pacific. We're focusing in on sustainability, on, on resilience, and being ready, and making plans for that. So this year, we've broadened um, our scope, and we're co-sponsoring the legislative briefing uh, with uh, Leo Ascension, the director of the Office of Planning. So our real thrust is let's plan well and long term for Hawaii's future. Yeah. And we hope everybody will come. It's on January 10th at the State Capitol Auditorium from 1 to 4 p.m. I want to distinguish something. You know, we had the EUC conference. I didn't see you there, Ben, last Thursday in Waikiki. Yeah. And um, gee, it was plenty of representation from Kauai. Fa matter of fact, Jan Ten Bruggenkate came, and he sort of represented KIUC there in a discussion of uh, alternative uh, utility models. Um, but you know, one of the most important aspects of the program was a discussion of planning. And uh, you know, I think we have to go further. I think this program on January 10th will go further. Uh, it's how important planning is. It's how you do planning and probably most important of all is how you implement plans rather than put them on a dusty shelf. Right. Um, so that's really a big part of the program on the legislative we're hoping, briefing. We're hoping to really, really hone in on, on long-range plan, but planning for results yeah. and really seeing where we go with that, especially since there's so much in front of us. The challenges are, are here today. Yeah. 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 So Very important. Absolutely. Okay, so let's, let's talk about our, uh, our case in chief, so to speak. Let's talk about the title of the show is uh, What's on the Horizon for Kauai County in 2018? We preface by that, that by saying that Kauai County is really heroic these days. It's done a really fabulous job uh, with KIUC. Uh, it's moving ahead in so many ways. It's so crisp. I know that you know, not everybody agrees on everything, but the fact is you've achieved a kind of nirvana uh, and having the public <laughs> agree with what KIUC does. And, and uh, this was covered, how KIUC gets along, uh, you know, with the county. This is really remarkable, and you are, you know, cutting important turf that way as a model, a laboratory for the rest of us. Um, so it's very important what you do. We have to watch what you do, because I know we can learn. We already have learned. Everybody has learned from what happens in Kauai. You know, and I think it must be the water. I've always, I've always <laughs> said that it must be the water in Kauai. But tell us what happened in 2017, Ben. What's it been like? I mean, you've had a number of things that we have become aware of. One is we covered the energy conference there. Um, two is you have uh, not only uh, Tesla, but the AES project in solar storage. Um, and uh, we read that you're doing pumped hydro. You have a project for pumped hydro. So energy is really going somewhere. And for that matter, so is sustainability. Tell us how 2017 and, and went And don't for forget you. the multimodal transportation. They were first on, with their Tiger Grant. Fair enough. Okay, Ben? All right. Okay, so we're going for a pretty broad reach here. <laughs> so, you know, 2017 was a great year. I, you know, I think you guys named a couple of the great projects that KUC has been working on. And, um, you know, my marching orders from Mayor Carvalho are really straightforward. You know, he feels that KUC is doing excellent work. 
uh, is in touch with the community and is is going in the right direction. So our job is really a supportive role, um, and it's not hard to do because they are they know what they're doing, they're executing, and they're and they're moving us toward an agreed goal. So you know when you talk about AES and when you talk about pump storage hydro, you know there's not a huge lift there for the county. It's 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 our job in government, in local government, is to make sure that um, the community is informed and that they have the resources they need to to execute on these projects that really have you know great end results for everybody. Um, pivoting to you know in, work inside the county, I think you guys are well aware of the work we, we you know our planning and and public works people have been doing with regards to multimodal transportation, and so you know we've been talking for years about, but also acting on. Um, projects that include the Lihui Town Core Revitalization Project that involves a Tiger Grant from the federal government. And that's really about getting people the infrastructure they need to allow them to shift modes from single occupancy vehicle to, you know, mm -hmm. being more frequent bus riders and walkers and, and bikers. And, you know, that's a big part of our overarching strategy. I think you guys talked about having the State Office of Planning involved at your event on January 10th, which I think is great. Um, because it's all about integration. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a breath and let you guys react. Because I, I know we're when we're on the phone, there's this risk of just going on forever. <laughs> Not to worry, Ben. <laughs> we'll interrupt. We you. control the phone line, you know. <laughs> so uh, one thing I wanted to say was I love multimodal transportation, and I, and when I, this may be hard for you to believe, but I used to be a bike racer in my early days. Sharon wasn't mm. born yet, <laughs> <laughs> and I ro I rode bike a lot on Kauai. And Kauai was a little special in that regard because it had no shoulders. So Kauai, was, for a bike rider, was a pretty dangerous business. And I wonder if your multimodal initiative includes uh, broadening the roads, uh, putting in shoulders, putting in bike lanes where I would feel a little more comfortable riding around. So, yes. So that is all um, in process, and there's, a, and there's a lot of it already on the ground. Um, I, I, Jay, have you ridden on the, the multi-use path on the east side before? Not yet. Okay, so something you guys all have to do next time you come is hit the Kapaa Town mm -hmm. and ride on the path. I, I'm not even sure how many continuous miles it is now, but I'm going to guess it's around seven or eight, That's maybe good. more, and I'll probably get in trouble for, from those who work, who work on it day to day <laughs> um, because of the number of continuous miles that are available for people to ride on the east mm -hmm. side. The transformation there has been interesting because it, initially it was seen as a recreational path, but it's, as it grows and grows, and it will continue to, and the plans are in place to do so, you know, it's obvious that it, it becomes a transportation amenity as it can get you from one town to the next or, sure. or across town, sometimes faster than you can do when you're stuck in traffic. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we, we tend to think of the neighbor islands as quiet, remote, no cars, no traffic, <laughs> and yet... When you go to the neighbor islands, sometimes you find really tough traffic. And I wonder what your traffic you know, situation is in Kauai. We have really tough traffic, Jay. Um, <laughs> you know, I, think we're, I think we're in the same boat as a lot of, a lot of folks around the state. I, I want to caveat this because you know, I, I think it's always important to kind of state where you have expertise and where you don't. We have some really smart transportation planners, both at the county and state level on Kauai, and I am not one of them. So allow me to just generalize and say, you know, we Kapa in particular has had some really significant traffic problems, and and you know we're we are focused on working with the state to figure out how to solve those. Mm -hmm. But I think the story that's being told around the state, and and everyone's familiar with it at this point, is that you know the federal government no longer has the money to just to just hit the hit the add capacity button for for highway problems, and so we're in this place where we have to look for new and um, different solutions than we've had for the past 30, 40, 50 years to traffic problems. It's, it's a big challenge, but we're, we're doing everything we can. And that, I think, it involves in, in some large part mode shift. It involves demand management of, of traffic. You know, it involves a lot of different things. So, so I just want to pivot a little bit to 2018. What of where you are or what you've been doing this year, not only in transportation, but in clean energy uh, and other projects, um, do you see going forward in 2018 and whether you have the money to do it, whether you have the resources to do it, and if not, what are your priorities? Good question, Sharon. Um, you know, we're just entering our budget process for FY19, so that kind of remains to be seen as far as what, what council determines is the right direction, but I know that Mayor has put a big emphasis on, on 
energy planning and on climate action planning. And so um, if you guys recall back in June, um, our illustrious president, uh, Donald Trump, hmm. made the determination that it was appropriate for the U.S. or, or it was likely for the U.S. to pull out of the uh, Paris Agreement. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in response to that, all four mayors around the state got together and said, no, we don't agree with that action, and we support climate action planning. We support getting much, much more serious at the local level about, about tracking all the good work we're doing and making sure that we're going to be able to, to um, deliver on the commitments that our government made um, to Paris and, and, and take responsibility for our greenhouse gas emissions. So what specifically does that mean for Kauai? So what specifically does that mean? That means we look, you know, we, we are digging deep and we are collaborating with the other three counties and we're determining exactly what the um, result of all these actions are. So, you, you know, we just had a short discussion about our multimodal planning. Everybody knows what KIEC is doing and, 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 and other things, but really what it means is what does that all add up to and how does it compare to the you know, the need to reduce greenhouse gases across the state and, and you know, more specifically here on Kauai. Um, what kind of actions might come out of that? Well, certainly, you know, we've already got a lot going on in mode shift, but as we dive into climate action planning more, we may find that we want to, you know, we there's a need to accelerate electrification of vehicles, for example. So, you know, as you guys probably know, there's you know that, that that's an area where we've done some work, and Mayor has put some EVs in our fleet, and we've you know we've 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 learned um, through that process. But we're not necessarily the leader around the state. You know, Maui has made some tremendous progress. Oahu actually has quite a, a high number of, of EVs. So, for us within the climate action planning process, it might be something where we say, hey, we need to you know we need to make some more robust policies and, and move that forward in EVs. I'm not going to say what those are right now because. You know, it's it's always important to make the to, to give those decisions to the policymakers, but there's certainly um, levers that we can pull and and things we can do uh, working together. Well, you know, we're we're at a point where we're almost going to take a break, but I wanted to get uh, some reaction, if you will, from our color commentator, <laughs> Ken Rogers, who comes at this with a fresh approach. <laughs> Ken, what do you what do you think of Ben? What do you think of Sharon? <laughs> Well, Sher Sharon's gorgeous, and it's great to sit here, you know, but I'm worried about all the American publicity about, uh, you know, better keep my hands above the table type of thing. Um, <laughs> however, about, I, kind of I had a, an interesting <laughs> question that had concerned me about, about um, the uh, hydro in Kauai, because uh, British Columbia, Canada, where I come from, has uh, experimented with what they called run-of-the-river hydro and the government at the time this is just a few years ago uh, was a conservative nothing like the uh, tea party conservative but for canada it was conservative and uh, so they let uh, uh, industry bid for these run of the river projects and so they would be a great example for Kauai to study to see some of those projects were terrific and some illustrate exactly what not to do, where you have such gorgeous landscape that if you're, you need places to store the water and then uh, how to pipe it from a high elevation to where you're going to generate power. And it was how you do that uh, can, you know, really destroy the landscape for quite a while or it can not change it very much at all and just blend in very quickly. And, and I think it's that blend in quickly experience that um, is useful to see somebody else that screwed it up or done it right. Yeah. Ken, you got any reaction or comment yeah, on that? Ben. <laughs> you guys are just going right into the deep end with, uh, with water issues. You got it. <laughs> well, well, I know that KIUC had, wait, wait. had the hydro, yeah, yeah. KAC has done some really careful planning, and they're moving forward with pump storage hydro. So, you know, what they envision is they envision um, large solar farms that would, during the day, pump water uphill, and then obviously they would have the ability to release that water at nighttime when they needed the energy and, and um, really do some good balancing in terms of their daily load curve. So certainly, uh, you know, Ken is very right in terms of the sensitivity of those projects and, the you know, the potential for, for um, mistakes. 
I, I know that KAEC is, is taking this very slowly and they're engaging all the stakeholders and they're making sure they, they understand. I think one of the other variables that's a little different here, um, first of all, the scale is, is much smaller, I, which I think you can imagine. But then second of all, a lot of these projects are, are actually run of ditch. So in some cases they are run of river, but in a lot of cases they're run of ditch. So you have an existing irrigation ditch and what you're mm -hmm. doing is you're putting that water in a pipe and you're, and you're capturing the energy that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the special sauce in Kauai <laughs> that makes it so special. We're going to try to examine Ben as we always do about what is really happening to make it such a fabulous place for energy and sustainability. We'll be right back. Christmas and a Happy New Year from Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Talk. Hello! Ha. What do you want to One. talk about? Ooh, Bingo, yeah. we're back, we're back. I was Sharon Moriwaki, co-chair and co-host of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Think Tech, and Ben Sullivan, Energy and Sustainability Coordinator of the County of Kauai, and Ken Rogers, Color Coordinator. I'm sorry, <laughs> Color <laughs> color Commentator. <laughs> Are you also color very coordinated? <laughs> He's a retired Canadian businessman who comes and gives us. Okay, we are talking about what's on the horizon for Kauai County in 2018, how things have gone, and now we talk about how things are going to go. So, you know, it's clear. I mean, you know, at first we may have just been dazzled by Kauai, but then after a while we figure out that we're dazzled on a long-term basis. We keep being dazzled, Ben, and we got to know why that is. What is happening over there? Is it some kind of moon phase thing? What is it? <laughs> yeah, we, we've had we've had this conversation before, and um, you know that I will I will say you know first off that um, Mayor Carvalho's leadership is just a tremendous asset and has been for almost ten years on the island, um, and and then you know you have such a strong community, people are willing to stand up and to really engage each other on these tough issues. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. You know, sometimes we have community meetings where we're just not making progress. But we keep grinding away, and, and um, of late we've been successful. And I think, I think you build on the momentum of success. And so you see an example like KAUC, and I think that has kind of spilled over. And you see an example of the collaborative work that's happening in the transportation sector and engaging people at, at, the, you know, at the level of the schools, at the level of the health, the public health agencies, you know, really across the community. And people are starting to see and understand the benefits that we can bring. So, um, no special sauce, as far as I know. I'm not going to claim that it's in the water. <laughs> I think I think it's in the people, and I think you know. I think to some extent also. You, you know, there's there's always a uh, a glow that you guys see from afar that maybe is just an illusion. You know, it's <laughs> it's hard work. So, um, and, and and honestly, I've been witness to some of the great things happening over on Oahu recently, and I'm I'm thrilled to see it. So, the admiration is mutual. Well, let me say that uh, Sharon and I serendipitously were at this meeting of, uh, what is it, polarization uh, in the community, uh, run by Peter Adler at the university uh, on Friday. The Public Policy Friday, Center uh, and Public, public Policy, policy Center. Center. That's right, it was your yeah, organization. Was and, the, and the question of the day was, uh, how do we make these community meetings work? Uh, the same question that you're really talking mm -hmm. about, and it's, a, it's still, you know, a magical question because we don't know exactly, it's a social psychology, public psychology kind of question to get people who are on opposite sides of the fence not to argue so much, but to seek a common solution, to come in with good faith. And a lot of it has to do, and this is my take on the discussion of that conference, a lot of it has to do with the leadership, call it a facilitator, moderator, coordinator, person uh, who attends the conference on behalf of whatever agency it is, whoever set the meeting up, uh, to kind of bring people together and not and not you know not let them go off the off the path. Now the uh, the other thing that that Ben mentioned mm -hmm. is that's also the implementation that the trust develops trust. when you see results yeah. and seeing that that the decision maker will take the input and do 
what was suggested, right. or at least have explanations for why it can't be done yeah. or how it can be done. Yeah, that was central in the discussion, yeah. and, I, and I think you probably have achieved that through you know, this alternative arrangement of the voting for the directors of, uh, of KIUC. Um, and, and, the, and the connection between those directors and, and county council and county government is where somehow there has emanated over the past 10 years of Bernard uh, Carvalho's uh, uh, administration a trust, a trust in the government, and the government trusts the people. And when you have that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of exchange of trust, all of a sudden things change and people, you know, sort of believe in an altruistic common good and then it works better. And I think if I had to guess, and I'm not there, I'm not there every day, but uh, if I had to guess, that would be part of your success right there. Comment? Absolutely a big part of it. You know, I think, I think bringing people together under the, you know, under the idea that, hey, we've got to solve this, we've got to do it together, let's find common ground. These are all, these are all you know, themes that we're familiar with. I, I would be thrilled to hear some of the other outcomes that you guys took out of that meeting because it's never easy. You know, it's not, it's not like we now show up for these public meetings and everyone just says, hey, all right, great project, let's go forward. You know, it's, it's just that we do have a stronger foundation within some of the conversations to move forward on. And so that's been, you know, hard fought and earned. And um, it's, it's great to see, but it's also something that has to be upkept and maintained. And, uh, and hopefully we can do so going forward. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's fragile. It's a fragile piece, if you will, a fragile trust. And as hard as it is to achieve it, it's a lot easier to lose it mm -hmm. any day. <laughs> so, so, so Ben, so Ben, so what are some of the challenges that, that are the more fragile that you're working on and need to work on so that we can hear um, um, how we can support your efforts statewide as well as you know, through the forum and, and other organizations because you have succeeded in doing quite a few projects. And what kinds of things do you have on the burner, so to speak? So, you know, I'm excited because the collaboration with the other counties is really ramping up, and I think that the, you know, all the other counties with with City and County of Honolulu as the anchor are really are really working much more closely together. Mm -hmm. I think that's something you guys are kind of commenting on and perhaps even featuring on uh, on June or I'm sorry, January 10th. Um, you guys probably know me that, and I get just kind of excited about data. So, you know, we're, we've been having this conversation about data collaboratives and how to open up more data. I don't want to bore your listeners too much with that because data without visuals is, a, is kind of a, a an empty joke, but um, it's a really important piece of the puzzle to, to get shared data so that we all have a common understanding of what's actually happening and what trends are continuing or you know either going in the right or the wrong direction. Well, I think the public wants to see that for accountability purposes, yeah, so that we say we do what we say we're going to do and, and you know, see the results of that. Yeah. As well. On collaboration among the counties, uh, we learned from Fred Riddell, your counterpart in Maui, um, or at least energy counterpart in Maui, uh, that there's, a, there's some scheduled uh, meeting of all the, all the uh, I guess, county, county representatives uh, here in Oahu in the next few weeks. They're going to talk about what the counties are doing. It's a great collaboration. You want to comment on that? So I think what Fred might be referring to is something we did actually last week. So we oh, had, that's uh, it. That's uh, the one. Yeah, that's the one. So we had a climate action planning workshop, and there was about, you know, it was a small enough group that we could get build that trust over a short amount of time and interact really intensively. It was only about 35 people, but we had people from all four counties. We had people from uh, transportation. We had people mm. from the state energy office, from elemental accelerator, from... Um, you know, you know, you hear uh, a number of other groups that were uh, Hawaii Energy, so Brian Kealoha and his team, and we really had some good conversations and there were some great takeaways from that meeting about what, you know, what comes next. One of the things that I would highlight really quickly is that we also included folks that we haven't always in the past, which is to say, here we are in energy discussion and we're including people doing adaptation planning. So that was a really interesting twist and I think it was, it was a fruitful way to, to orchestrate a day and a half workshop because it helped us understand the, the the other side of the coin, if you will, when we're looking at climate change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, that's the the thread that seems to be going forward now. We got to connect energy with climate change. We got to connect sustainability, resilience, and all that with climate change, uh, which is kind of a mind bend in many ways because the, the two don't you know inherently touch, and we got to make them touch. We got to make one one affect the other. Very important. So, you know, we, I'd like to ask you a two-part question uh, here at the, almost the end of our show, and that is, what should we be looking 
uh, for in Kawhi's moves in 2018 that we can learn from? What is happening, do you think, that, that creates a, a lesson for Oahu and, and for that matter the other islands to learn from going forward? My second part of that question is, what is happening on, on Oahu and the other islands that you are watching that you could learn from? What is the exchange here? Uh, can you identify you know, you, how you see those threads coming together in 2018? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we would love to learn from and participate in the great work that the city and county is doing in terms of electrifying buses, and so that's something we're paying very close attention to, and we see a really strong collaboration between um, the between the that entity and uh, Hawaiian Electric in terms of trying to bring electric buses to market there on Oahu. So that's very exciting. Um, one of the things we hope to do in 2018 better is involve youth more and get more into the schools with these conversations because mm -hmm. I think Jay candidly these problems are bigger than any of us and we need to very deliberately be prepared to hand off the torch of these challenges to the next generation and I, and I mean that very literally I don't mean in the standpoint of like you know the metaphor of involving youth and kind of give them a pat on the back and saying this is what you're going to be up against I mean this is, these are the real challenges we don't have answers for, and we need you guys to start getting into position so that we can hand this off in a very effective way, you know, kind of relay race style, so we don't miss a beat as these things move forward. Yeah, that's great. That's absolutely right, too. I totally agree. <laughs> well, <clears throat> uh, Ken Rogers, it's time for some uh, color coordination here. Or <laughs> commentatorism, if you will. Well, I was going to ask a technical question. Have you considered... Uh, instead of simply electrification of things, the use of uh, hydrogen. You know, the hydrogen technology has progressed a lot, and the difficulty with uh, assuming everything will work on electrification is somehow you've got to be able to produce the electricity. And clearly, you know, you're going at great lengths to produce ele additional electricity, but over the long haul, um, you know, it's really hard to get enough electricity without using uh, hydrocarbons. Let me expand so, that for a minute, Ben. Uh, also, sure. you know, I mean, I've always felt that uniform rates around the state, I know it's harder if you have two utilities or maybe more, uh, but uniform rates and uniformity is a good thing because it makes us share. And I've always felt that cable or some way to transmit electricity from one island to another is very valuable to achieve that. And uh, to, to ride a little bit on the coattails of that question, uh, does hydrogen fit in the planning here as a way to move energy in tanks, right, from one island mm -hmm. to another? Has anybody been considering that in Kauai? No, we have not been considering it on Kauai. Um, you know, I'm, I'm aware that Kauai Island has done some work, and I'm sure you guys have talked to individuals who are working there. And, you know, I'm aware that there's been some work done on Oahu, but we just have not turned that corner on Kauai, and it's really just a matter of, so there's only so many things we can take on and only so many things we can try to gain enough experience in to, to understand well, and hydrogen just has not been one of those for us. I think the beauty of the, the four-county ecosystem is that everybody takes a different lead and we learn from each other. Again, I mentioned, you know, Maui County being a leader in electrification of vehicles. I think Hawaii is probably one of the leaders in, in hydrogen, right? And they've done some mm -hmm. work there. Yes, um, yes. And, and here parts. we are, we, you know, we're a leader in the electricity sector with our co-op and with, uh, you know, stored stored solar energy and, and perhaps going forward with pump storage. So everybody has their thing, if you will, and um, I, I hope to learn more and more about hydrogen as we go forward, but it's not something that's in our, it's in our quiver at this point, no. What a lovely conversation, Sharon. Wasn't this a great discussion? This is great. This is ben, really you're cool. terrific. You know, I mean, you're a great guest. We have to have you on all the time. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, Sharon, why don't you summarize the value here and say farewell to Ben and okay. our listeners? I, I think that what Brit, uh, Ben and Kawhi bring to us is, is really the kinds of integration, working together, the hard work that comes from, you know, but, but the results that come from working together, that it's, it's really a long process and that they have been at the wheel longer than, than most and they have a lot to share. So I really appreciate Ben starting us off really way back about three years ago on, on climate change and, and seeing how important it is for us to consider that. So we've come a long way in just a couple of years. Now it's uh, front and center. So I want to thank Ben in Kauai County for its continued work and your leadership there. Uh, and we hope to hear more from you, Ben, in the, the months and days to come. Thank you. What would you add to that? 
Ken, how much of what Sharon said do you agree with? I agree with everything <laughs> Sharon says, but, <laughs> you know, I was wondering um, how you're going to handle the uh, climate change deniers in Washington. You know, well, whether you've we have hired. To do our own thing. Okay, well, that, there's a challenging question, <laughs> Ben. ben. <laughs> we're going to leave that question for a later show <laughs> because we're out of time. Well, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Ben. Great Thanks, discussion. Ben. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. We'll see you Aloha. sooner. Aloha for Christmas. Yes, aloha. <laughs>